This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, going, you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you My name's Kellen, and that was my eyeball. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Ah, cool, right? Well, God gave us eyes to see, and they're pretty impressive. The eye muscles are the fastest in the body, and while the eye is only an inch across and weighs less than a slice of bread, it has over two million working parts and can see millions of colors. Incredible, right? Our Bible story today is from the book of Romans and was written by a guy named the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul was not one of the original 12 disciples of Jesus, but he had a pretty amazing encounter with Jesus that changed his life. So amazing that Paul ended up writing several books in the New Testament more than any other person. And so in Romans, Paul writes this, Ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. I'm talking about his eternal power and about the fact he is God. Those things can be seen in what he has made, so people have no excuse for what they do. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, look around. Look at this incredible world. See the incredible things in nature. The ocean, the mountains, how intricate a beautiful and single flower is. Hmm. Why are these things here? Well, Paul's saying it points to a God who created them. 
But God's creation doesn't just include nature. Look at your friends and your family, the people that you love and that love you. Where does that love come from? It comes from how you were created. And that fact also points to a God who loves us. Paul is simply saying, stop and take a closer look. And when you do, you'll see the evidence of a God who loves you and loves the world. If we really look for it, we'll be able to see the amazing things about God and the amazing things God is doing in our world. But here's something else I want to look at today. Even though Paul wrote this with only being able to use his eyes, today we're also going to use some tools to help us see things our eyes by themselves can't see. Let's take this telescope for example. Our eyes can only see so far, but when we look through a telescope and bring it into focus, we can see things further out in space. And some scientists have even used bigger and more powerful telescopes to see further and further into space. And here's the thing about space. It's huge! Let me show you what I've been able to see. So, here's us. But here we are in our solar system. Yep, you see that tiny little blue dot? That's us. So that's our solar system. But our solar system is a tiny, tiny thing in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now, where are we in our galaxy? You gotta figure we're right in the middle, right? Nope. Our solar system, all eight of our planets in the sun, is like a speck of sand right here. And you're thinking, well, that's got to be it, right? The galaxy's huge, so huge that I can't even wrap my head around it. But do you know how many more massive galaxies there are in the universe? Maybe a handful? Scientists now believe there are two trillion galaxies. When we look up at the stars, it lets us see the traits of a God who is bigger than our imagination. So, now that you and I are maybe feeling a little small, let me show you something else. I have a microscope here, and with super high-powered microscopes, we can see incredible detail of the smallest things. Our body is made up of all kinds of cells and some of the smallest things that can do incredible work that help us walk and talk, eat and think, digest our food, run around, climb trees, and each of those cells has its own job. Here. Take a look at this. All right, let's bring this into focus. All right, there we go. What do you guys think those are? I'll give you a hint. Everyone take a deep breath right now. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Those things are called alveoli. Our lungs are made up of tiny air sacs that take oxygen in and carbon dioxide out with every breath. Look how incredible they are. Do you know how many of them are in your lungs? Hundreds of millions. Every breath while you're running in gym class and every breath while you're sleeping. When you take a closer look with a microscope, we can see that even the smallest part of us is created with such detail and care. Our God is so vast, it's mind-boggling, but He also cares about the smallest thing inside each of you. But what else can we see in creation that points us to a God we can't see? Well, we read in Genesis, in the creation story, that humans were a part of creation, and it says that we were all created in the image of God. That includes me, and that includes you. That means a lot of things, but I think it means that since we were created in God's image, we too can point to God. I'll give you an example. If I saw a building on fire, that would be pretty scary, right? But do you know what else I could see if I took out this pair of binoculars? Whoa, I'd see people. I'd see the firefighters running to put out the fire. Maybe even going inside to save people. When we see people loving others more than themselves, it points to a God who created us to do some pretty amazing things. When we really focus, we have so many things around us that we can see and observe. And even though we can't physically see God, the things we can see point to a God that is here right now working in our lives. As we learn more and more about this world that God has created for us, we can be excited about how much care God gave the world 
And that's a reminder that God loves me and God loves you. And that's some pretty good news. Well, I'll see you next time as we take a closer look. Hi, boys and girls. It's Wanda from the Florence campus. Are you ready for your craft? Great. Let's have some fun. We're going to make focus glasses. Do you like mine? They're out of this world, huh? Okay, great. Let's get started. Great, boys and girls. These are the supplies that you will need. Here we have a stencil that was found on the internet that you can cut out for your glasses. Or you could do like me. Find a glass, trace it, and cut your glasses out from that. See? You may use also cardboard paper. You can use cereal boxes. Actually, this was an oatmeal box. If you're gonna make out of space glasses like mine, you'll need aluminum foil. Check out my summertime glasses. I made it out of this regular paper. Then you'll need things like glue, tape, scissors, and then crayons and markers or colored pencils. Whatever you have to decorate your glasses with would be fine. Also, I use just a regular gift bag to cut up and add decorations to my outer space glasses. You be creative. It's all up to you. Just have fun. Hey boys and girls, now you have all you need in order to make your focus glasses. Faith. Did you have a great time making your glasses? Yes, I had an amazing time making my glasses. Awesome. So remember, boys and girls, have fun and let's focus. Hi, everybody. We had an awesome day one at Focus VBS. We can discover more about God when we focus on Him, when we take a closer look at who He is and what He has done. One of the best ways we can do this is to look at everything God has made. His amazing creations like stars, the galaxy, flowers, and so much more. Bottom line, this is what we want you to remember. Focus on God through what you can see. Think about that. Because of God and how much he's loved us, we see God's power and the things that he has made. He is big and powerful. He's always good, and He loves us so much. At this time, I want to pray for you. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Savior, if you've never done that before. Because the way we become closer to God is to receive Him and become into a relationship with Him. And He loves us so much. May I pray for you? I want to invite you in to receive Jesus as your Savior. To receive Jesus, the Son of God, as the one who you would draw closer to and be able to see more things in the world through the eyes of Jesus. So if you've never received Jesus as your Savior before, please repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus to this earth to save me. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. So I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God and that he rose on the third day. Father, I thank you for everything that you've done for me and that you love me in Jesus' name, amen. At this point, you are now part of the family. And as you grow closer to God, you will be able to see more of God in everything around from creation through, as well as the behavior and the reactions of people. So, day one, Day one was an awesome day. We had fun with games. We learned how we can see God in creation. And guess what? Day two is going to be even more amazing. So I hope to see everyone back here again for day two at 10 a.m. Before we leave, let's pray for our families. But Everyone, if you could, bow your heads. Father, we thank you for our families. We ask, Lord God, that you be with our parents our cousins, Lord God, our aunts, our uncles. God, we thank you that they see and become even closer to you. They see you in creation. They see your love and receive your love, God. God, we thank you right now for peace in our homes. 
We thank you that we feel your love and we declare that this is a great day in Jesus name. Amen. Have fun. See everybody. Have a great day. See everybody tomorrow. This is my